We're back once again, we've got Cry here playing his Apothecary. He seemed to have been playing a lot of Apothecary around this period. Which, to be fair, was quite a while back, because these replays were from uh, about five weeks ago, before I went on my hiatus, but anyway. Cry is going to be playing against Asmon here, with his Warlock. Ah, oh, I forgot to go offline. God damn it. I do this all the time. Nothing changes, does it, boys? Nothing changes tell you what it's a searing day here in the United Kingdom what is it about uh, 26 degrees <laughs> there is some science behind why 26 degrees in the UK feels a lot hotter than it does in other places but ultimately it's only you know it's not it's not that hot but it feels very hot to us Brit bongs and uh, it's a challenge while casting suffice to say cry doing something interesting here not going for double scouts wonder if that is because of the map or because of the matchup not sure typically scouts very good against eldar i mean we had this whole thing where people were saying you only go triple scouts against eldar which i think is questionable it works really well against this this eldar build of fast gens guardians banshees but if they go for multiple guardians i think it can be very tricky and if they go for ranged upgrades on their heroes so if we go for immolator put him in range stance are you fighting a wall spider exact that kind of thing it can be quite bad so yeah to only go one scout is very odd i'm thinking it is quite a laney map the map here ashes of typhon certainly the default variant not the redux that inikura made it's very much just free lanes you know one two then free by the contested vp so perhaps that i was going to say maybe he wants like double tax wouldn't ever really be optimal he probably is going for some sort of 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one build devastators to counter maybe the warlock or maybe maybe he wants like double asm or something crazy like that i don't suspect that devastators would be particularly good probably wants to cancel this flamer here i don't think he's going to get too much done with the shuriken coming out yep he did it were worth a shot maybe asmon would have gone for rangers instead and then you might have actually got the gem bash off they wouldn't be able to shut down the attacks in the same way that the shuriken can but we've got a nice little pincer attack here trying to flank the shuriken but there you go leap knocking it over knocking him a little bit out of the firing arc and the shuriken kind of realizes that gonna rotate once again with the attacks moving in and that's it ties him up in melee good stuff now the flamer would be quite useful scouts doing their thing capping the point fast asm en route double gens here for the space marines because they didn't go for the oh lucky special because they didn't go for the second scout this is now looking like a dead tactical space marine over here no heal oh very lucky a couple more attacks and this dude would have died quite lucky there because really cry should have got the heal off on those attacks before disengaging with the airpods bit of a very small micro blunder there but that's all right now guardians obviously by default absolutely dominate default scouts and so cry has managed to take over most of this side of the map but the scouts have basically just avoided them took that point and then moving on to decapping the vp and here we go asm jumping in asm oh they must have used a jump earlier to get onto the field sooner and this is really bad for them because it means they don't have their second jump so now they are forced off by the shuriken Cry is going for a 4 gen fast tech right now. Wow. Okay, well, Asmon needs to put the pressure on. He's got his ranges out, which is pretty conventional. He's even got the Merciless Witchblade, which is quite a good tool to deal with ASM. Not only doing really nice damage per hit, but he drains energy every time you hit. Beautiful against those jump squads. But particularly the ASM, because of how easily they can do a double jump. And Asmon is putting the pressure on. Cry actually right now floating power in comparison to his amount of requisition. Probably because he hasn't invested any upgrades on his scouts. Only just getting the bolter now for the apothecary will be good to help counter this merciless witchblade warlock. And that is via the full auto ability on that bolter to stun him. Actually cancels the bolter. But yeah, this build clearly not working for Cry. He is now in a situation where he has excessive amounts of power well actually no to be honest it's actually balanced quite well having cancelled that bolter and not getting any other upgrades here wow quite a lot of banshees going down there free in fact maybe even four with the apothecary coming in can he claim another 
No, not quite. Quite lucky to get out there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, four Banshees going down. Pretty nice. Not quite got the 55 energy on the ASM, so the Apothecary is going to suffer for a bit. But the ASM are going to be moving in. Here they go. Boom. Banshees obviously having just retreated off the map. Not much to deal with them. Oh, shit. Asmon went for a second shuriken. And here comes the, the Warlock back in again. So now it's quite obvious to cry what he needs to do. This Merciless Switchblade, as you can see, very powerful war gear, but it is very expensive. 35 power makes it the most expensive kit you can get in Tier 1. So, Cry knows that, right? So what he needs to do now is he needs to exploit the fact that Asmon's paid for this. He's only got relatively cheap ranges, no long rifles, so these aren't too dear. What are these, 20 power or something? But he did get two shurikens. So, Cry knows he's ahead in tech. He needs to get a Razorback out and he needs to put the pressure on with that Razorback start bleeding the opponent. ASM probably want to go down the middle, tax with, can grab a Flamer and then go for the gens with the Razorback. And then the scouts can cap this side of the map and the Apo can go down and support. Problem for Cry is, of course, he's in this interim stage now where he's waiting for his Razorback to come out, but prior to it coming out, he basically can't do anything to fend off this assault on his gen farm. And I like this positioning here with the Rangers behind with the Shuriken pistols. Remember that these guys give a debuff to the damage resistance of anything they shoot with those pistols. Just imagine they're sort of marking them as targets. So, if they shoot at the ASM when they're attacking, the ASM are attacking this Gardener squad, even if this guy wasn't here, obviously now he's going to cover it. They're going to make the Merciless Witchblade do a lot more damage to the ASM, and it already does a lot of damage per hit. 65 melee DPS, I think it's like 130 per hit or something, it's a huge amount of damage per hit. So yeah, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal. Here is the Razorback. It is going to eventually get rid of the Warlock. The Warlock should be able to finish that cap though, which is pretty bad for Cry. Entirely having his natural cap, which is not ideal. Has he got enough for a Flamer? No, he doesn't. So even with a Razorback, it's going to be quite some time to actually bash these gens lacking the Flamer. So that's the problem, he chose instead to go for shotguns, which is okay, I guess, I wouldn't have done that, I'd have caught the back with scouts and I would have got a flame attack squad and sent them down here, but let's see, will they have time to bash it, I mean at this point Asmon is tier 2, he now has a bright lance on the field, and he has a falcon on route, so obviously there's a bit of time before the falcon comes out here, I think he's making a little mistake here as well, wow, ASM falling at very high HP there, that was quite unlucky, all the Shrieking catapults apparently hitting the same dude. Very unfortunate. I think he should have been attacking the close, the uh, further away gens with the scouts and the Razorback sooner. Lucky it's only a Warlock. If that was a Fasir or a Watt Spider x this would probably be a dead Razorback with the crack shot global for the Spider or the guide ability for the Fasir. But Warlock can't do any such buffs. Nice little jump here. Ooh, can we get a nice nade? Oh, a little early. They get one model on with a grenade. Wow. Lots of dead banshees. No Exarch, you see. They're just quite squishy about their Exarch against all this upgraded SM stuff. Replacing one of the generators here. But man, map control not looking great for Cry right now. We've got the Apo inside the Razorback, it appears. Seen that little healing aura on the tactical space marines there and rangers just going around doing a capping duty themselves pretty good job for them nice cheap unit they got that fleet of foot so it's quite effective falcon and the bright lance going to be advancing on the gen farm again wow there's really no respite for cry right now his gens are getting hammered constantly incessantly incessantly hammered that's what your wife was wanting you could never achieve it though could you it's alright. We can't all do that. That's what swinging's for. It's going to be a Devastator coming out for Cry. Presumably that's going to be a Laz Cannon to deal with a Falcon. Combine it with a Melter Bomb. That could be pretty effective. Don't forget Stimulants as an upgrade potential on the Apothecary. I think Stimulants will be very good right now. You're fighting a Shuriken still with its annoying suppression. Stimulants is that suppression immunity to the target squad 
15% damage resistance, I believe, and 30% damage. Or the damage in the DR might be inversed. It's one or the other. But it does affect things like the Melter Bomb. So it will make the Melter Bomb do more damage. Obviously very good on the last cannons as well to make them do more damage. And remember, if you hit the Falcon once with the last cannon and snare it, then you can jump in your ASM, hit it with the Melter Bomb again, and then that will be 100% immobilization. A little bit of Miss Micro there from Cry a little bit late. Seeing the ambush there from the Eldar who came out of infiltration from the Holofield of the Rangers. And a little bit of a flank. Angels of Death is going down, helping the ASM quite a bit here. They've got invulnerability to knockback right now on 50% damage resistance. They are going to be tanking alongside their Apothecary buddy. Apothecary with no upgrades right now. Not a very powerful hero with no upgrades, I have to admit. But with the Angels of Death and the Apo support, they absolutely tear those Banshees to pieces. Of course, remember, one of the biggest ways that Banshees win their melee fights is by special attacks but if there's angels of death the special attack will not do any knockback so yeah not very effective and asmon actually messed up his micro there inadvertently rotated around oh god the bright lance is firing at the razorback okay there come the asm um he inadvertently rotated his falcon and allowed it to die then because the final shot wouldn't have killed it from the front but hit rear armor and did kill it what can you do Chug, chug, chug goes the Razorback once again. Actually, to be honest, the um, the situation looking pretty good for Cry right now. It's kind of balanced out a bit. Still behind on VPs, but he's getting there. What, what's the level situation looking like? Okay, ASMR level 2 versus the level 1 Banshees, but the Banshees are nearly level 2 as well. Got a bit of distort field on them right now. Protect them from that Razorback pew pew. Yeah, Asmon complaining about the range of that last cannon. I remember, if you go back, you'll see the arc was like around here, yet it hit the Falcon. But that's because the wind-up started while it was in this arc. Was it a bright... If it was a bright lance, a Chaos last cannon, a beamy looter, any other squad basically that doesn't have wind-up on their shots, they would have just killed the Falcon instantly. Because it would have just shot while it was in this arc. But the last cannon starts winding up while it's in this arc, and then finishes its shot as long as it can see the target. So, it isn't an advantage, it's actually a disadvantage. But people might think intuitively, Oh my god, you're shooting me even though I'm out of the rain and sh the arc. Surely that's an advantage of the last kind of Devastators. No. Any other AV would have already shot you before you even left the arc. You would have had less time to deal with the, the last cannon. You know, in that time, prior to the wind-up concluding, if he lost vision, that would it be it. The last cannon would misfire. Or... You could, you know, you've got time to knock over the, the, um, the last cannon. You know, things like the Altark bomb, etc. But anyway, just wanted to point that out because I hear that complaint quite a lot. Rangers caught out here by the ASM. A double sink kill on the last guy, jeez. And ASM getting a nice bit of XP in the end here. What is the plan for Asmon? This is quite tricky. Falcon is always so risky against SM. I don't know, SM AV is just mental. Like, you can go the Ray Flood purely because it's got more HP, but then it's uh, it's less mobile, and you still are vulnerable to the Melter Bomb last cannon combo. We didn't even see Melter Bombs here on the ASM. Didn't even bother. Still managed to kill the Falcon. Obviously, that was an error on Asmon's behalf. Oh, it might not have been Holofield earlier, actually. In fact, it probably wasn't. I don't think they get it by default with their pistols. No, I'm not certain. Oh, it looks like this is going to be the end of the Razorback. Nice play. With the very thing that I was going to be talking about, the Cloak of Shadows. So, it's AoE infiltration, which is cool as a gimmick. And it works right there to kill the Razorback, right? But the other advantage is, check it out. All these... The Banshees right now are taking 15% less range damage. And then they've got Distort Field for 50% less range damage. And then if they've used Fleet of Foot with their Exarch, they're also going to be taking 50% reduced range damage. Now that stacks multiplicatively, meaning you won't get 100% immunity, but you're going to get very close when you're stacking all these buffs. So pretty cool to see. Cry is just going to go tier 3. He doesn't have a tremendous amount of power though, so I am concerned about him losing his power as he's going tier 3. 
It's becoming quite a familiar sight, this, isn't it? Him losing his gen farm over here. Yeah, this could be a problem. Because he'll, he'll get in this situation where he has just enough power banked up to get one tier 3 unit, and then, then it'll run out. And he won't be able to get any more. And then if you're only stuck with one tier 3 unit, it might make you question whether or not that was even worth it. Bit of an ambitious jump there from the ASM. They should have known that he was going to retreat out in time. Bit of bleed coming in from the Warlock. Honestly, not seeing too much from this Merciless Witchblade, it feels like. It's a bit tricky when you go for it and you don't have the Champion's Rope to give you that knockback immunity. You're vulnerable to the shotguns and the initial jump of the ASM, but we have seen the Cloak of Shadows do good work. It's picked up the Warp Throw as well. I think we've seen one over here, but it was relatively inconsequential. I find Warp Throw a lot better when you're fighting more setup teams or when the map's kind of tighter and you're having a lot of army versus army fights. Cry's not really engaging in that, as you can see right now. He's very split up. A post team with the ASM. Sort of attacks running around, capping on their own. Same with the, the last cannon. Same with the scouts. Everyone's sort of staggered about. So I think he'll find very few opportunities to use that warp throw well. I think actually, rather than going for the warp throw, even though it is a classic and it is a pretty broken war gear, to be fair, probably would have been better just getting Falshu's wing to give a speed and damage boost to your banshees. Help them out in those big fights against the ASM and that kind of thing. You know, the Apo is always running around with his ASM. Warlock should be running around with his Banshees, as he is right now. He's got good synergy with the Cloak of Shadows. But yeah, Warp Throw's not really going to help those Banshees, is it? A damage boost definitely would. And when it comes to Retreat Wipes, like this right now, the speed boost would be even better. Might even get the tax anyway. Yeah, I guess them anyway. Holy shit. Wasn't a great situation for those tax. Asmon has also gone tier 3, so both players are now tier 3, but I'm sure you guys, as veteran watchers of this channel, will know... What's going on with the SM versus Eldar tier 3s, boys? How powerful is the SM to tier 3 out of all the races? One of the best, right? We're talking OM, IG, SM. These are the best tier 3s in the game. How powerful is the Eldar tier 3? Probably the weakest in the game. So... Generally not great. We'll see how it goes though. Right now we've got the Seer Council coming out. Oh, is this Terminators? I was going to say, so the Seer Council will counter the Terminators quite well. It is indeed going to be Terminators. Let's see how Cry can use these. Now we have got a Warlock here, so there's potential to use Swift Movement Global, which boosts the speed of everyone. Yeah, Banshee's just got to get out of there. Way too much DPS to be going in on their own. They're only level 2. They're going to need that Distort Field. They're going to need the Passive aura from the seer council that reduces the amount of range damage that anyone around them takes and themselves and of course the uh cloak of shadows oh there we go falchu's wing he got it he realized the um the warp throw wasn't really doing anything because we don't have many blobbed fights but check this out oh look at that yeah plus two speeds pretty scary and 25 extra, 25% extra damage. Yeah, that's pretty spooky on the Warlock. I don't know why he's not going into melee with the Terminators right now. He's just incurring loads of free damage. Perhaps thinking he can get a wipe on the last cannon? Maybe he can. Yeah, a little bit odd. Cry didn't retreat sooner. He does get a wipe. Probably just wants to retreat out of here. I don't think he wants this fight right now. Heavy Flamer is equipped. Retreat. Yo, he's going to bait it out. He's going to trade because he knows the Banshees are coming in afterwards. But here is the Heavy Flamer on the ground. Let's see how much damage that can do. Banshees have got Distort Field on them, have they? No, they don't. They don't even have Distort Field. Nor the Fleet of Foot, and they're not taking that much damage. Wow. Man, if they had... Um... Oh, they're Swift Movement. So that's it. Seers, Banshees, everything speed buffed right now. So this is great, because unlike Fleet of Foot, it doesn't reduce the amount of melee damage you do. Remember, Fleet of Foot reduces your melee damage by 40%. Swift Movement doesn't. So you can see, clearly, the Warlock has a lot of synergy with melee. Things like that Falchu's wing, things like swift movement. Do you remember how earlier I was saying that the Razorback would have died if it was a Warp Spider Exarch or a Farseer due to the ability to boost the Bright Lance? Well, this is why the the Warlock doesn't have those capabilities because the Warlock is more melee focused. A bit weird that the Warlock turned around then. I really feel like he could have slain the Apothecary. Very odd that the Apo is still running around naked. We did see an upgrade from the ASM to Vanguard right now, but not looking great, to be honest. 
Uh, loss of the Terminators is, is a pretty terrible situation for Cry. There's still a Bright Lance on the field to help counter any Predator. And Asmon could get out of Fire Prism soon as well. So Asmon's got more power gens up. Yeah, it's just it's a pretty, pretty miserable situation for Cry. He's kind of screwed. He'd have to go for a Predator. Uh, I mean, this is presumably... Oh, he's got no one. He hasn't got any power. He'd never get a Predator out. Yeah, it's GG. So he's going for the Devastator, Heavy Bolter, try and counter the Seer Council, but... Situations like that, that's where you could swap out to the Warp Throw again. Pull the fucking... Pull the Heavy Bolter in, swap back to Foul Shoes Wing, activate it on the Seers, and then just rip them and retreat. And look at this, that's exactly what he's doing. So, pretty cool. Pretty nice to see. It's nice to see the Warlock utilising his more melee-orientated powers. Obviously Terminators there into Seer Council is not a very good matchup. The Terminators uh, would be a good matchup against the Prism, and the Predator would be the counter to the Seer Council. And generally, if you can get the Terminators plus the Predator, that will be superior to Seers plus Prism. But, didn't manage it. And now the power disparity between the two of them because of all that power bashing is really coming out. Nice to see the prism with that little buff that it got. Only 125 power now for this bad boy, not 135, which I think was necessary. They're very, very good if you can get them in multi. In, te in team games like 3v3, they're kind of cracked if you get a pair of fire prisms. As long as you're not fighting something like a K-Knob. But uh, yeah, in 1v1, the impact of them for 135 power was really lacking. And it was very map dependent as well. They're very good on this map because you have so much open spaces. You, you plant a prism here, you can cover all here and here. It's pretty awesome. But other maps like Think Gorilla's Forge, no, they're not doing much. Definitely not worth it there for 135. So nice to see that buff, but... There you go, folks. A bit of Eldar. I feel like Eldar are becoming rarer and rarer. Which I suppose it's appropriate to the law. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. That's going to be all from your boy Torpid this time. Leave a like and subscribe if you want more of this thing. We are still fighting that war against the algorithm. Torpid signing out.